In this video, we're going to talk about the garment's visual appearance, colors, textures, print inserts, and stitches. When we create or import a new pattern, it has this light, partially transparent color in 3D, which you would probably want to change to make the garment look more realistic. This can be done by changing the pattern's color, textures, and adding top stitches. For example, we can select a pattern in the Properties Pattern panel, Select the visual properties where you can select either color or texture. Let's talk about the color option first. You can select your color from the standard window color picker, where you can also select the RGBA value. You can copy the actual RGBA value if you want to apply it to other patterns as well. Another way to apply a solid color to a pattern or a group of patterns is to select the patterns I've selected these sleeves, for instance. Right mouse click and select the Set Texture option from the drop down menu. From the Open Texture, we just select the color option the same way as we did before. Let's also add color to some other patterns. This way, you can visually differentiate patterns in 3D. So let's sew it together. Now you can also change the colors with the simulation running or paused. I'm selecting the front and the back patterns now. This is quite simple and straightforward, but still not very realistic as it doesn't represent the fabric details. In order to make the 3D garment look more realistic, we should use textures. 3D Draper supports diffuse and normal maps. Plus you can also add a specular map as an alpha channel in the normal map. Let's add some texture to this hoodie. So we select a pattern, but instead of the color, we need to select the texture file. For example, from the different fabric swatches, we select this orange fabric as a diffuse map, and it appears in 3D. We can also show it in the 2D panel by selecting the Show Texture icon in the icon bar. Once we've added a texture to this pattern, we can control its position, scale, and angle it either from the Pattern Texture Transformation panel or by using the Edit Texture control to move, rotate, or scale your texture. Obviously, we can also delete this texture if needed. Once you've selected a texture for a pattern, you can see its file name appear in the Texture drop-down list. So if we now want to apply the same texture to another pattern, I can select this texture name from the drop down list for this pattern. Another example of using textures is the ability to apply a large texture to cover an entire pattern. For instance, for these jeans, we have a picture of the flat jeans. And we're going to use this texture to make the 3D model look more realistic. So we've had the texture prepared in Photoshop or in any other image processing program that looks like this. So we select all the patterns open our texture file, and position the texture to match the pattern contours. For the belt pieces, we also need to rotate the pattern to match the angle. Now we have all our textures positioned and we can drape it all together. Another way to make the 3D garment look more realistic is to use normal maps, with or without diffuse maps. Let's take a look at this t-shirt. We have the white patterns and we want to add more of a 3D feel to the fabric by applying only the normal map. As you can see, the fabric now has an additional 3D relief. To continue this exercise, we can now change the color and the normal map for the sleeves. I'm selecting the color and the normal map, adjusting the normal map scale, and now we have different colors and normal maps for the body and sleeves. So here we were only using solid colors with normal maps to achieve a more realistic 3D fabric look and feel. This dress is a more complex example of using the textures, including transparency, diffuse, normal, and specular maps. 
Let's take a look at this lace texture, which has some see-through as well as opaque areas with shiny sequins. We've prepared these textures in Photoshop. This is the diffuse map with the semi-transparent areas. This is the normal map. And in the channels, we can specify the alpha channel, which is used as a specular map to simulate the sparkly sequence. So, applying the diffuse map with transparency and a normal map with the alpha channel allows us to achieve these effects for this lace fabric. 3D Draper also has the visual settings section in the properties fabric where you can adjust a few additional parameters. Albedo intensity, specular intensity, shininess, and normal depth. Albedo is a measure of optical brightness, so you can make your fabric appear brighter or dimmer. Specular intensity affects the appearance of the bright spots on the fabric. Shininess or gloss changes how well a surface reflects light in a specular, mirror-like direction. Normal depth helps you to control whether you want your normal maps to look harder or softer. Back to our complex gown design. Again, we can adjust the appearance using the fabric visual settings. Increasing the albedo intensity will make the garment brighter. If I increase the specular intensity, our shiny sequins become brighter. So adjusting these visual settings allows us to achieve the best visual resemblance to the original garment. Another feature related to the textures and visual appearance of the 3D garment is the print overlay. It allows you to add imprints, embroidery, logos, zippers, rivets, and other graphics to your garment model. Let's review this functionality. We start with selecting the Create Print Overlay icon in the icon bar. And in the same fashion as we selected the textures, we have the option to select some diffuse and or normal maps for the graphics. For example, here I select only a diffuse map for a logo and adjust the position. We can also scale it and rotate. Now let's add just a normal map. It would look like an imprint on the fabric surface. Another example is this leather jacket where we combine several visual effects together. The normal maps for the fabric, imprint, and a zipper. Let's add a logo imprint using both diffuse and normal map. Let's sew it together. Now we can see that we achieve an additional 3D effect for this logo imprint because of the normal map that we've used, which creates the effect of three-dimensional depth for this logo. Now let's take a look at the zipper, which is also created using the print overlay functionality. Let's see how it was done. I'm invoking the create print overlay button and selecting the diffuse and normal map for this half of the zipper that we'd already prepared. Now we need to reposition the zipper element to its correct place and sew it together. Last but not least, let's talk about stitches and edges. Let's take a look at this jacket. Without the stitches and edges, it doesn't look very realistic, in part because the real fabric should show some thickness. So let's try to create this effect. Let's start with this line, and once we select it, we can see the stitches panel in the line properties on the right. First, we need to enable the stitches by checking the show box, and we can see the emboss effect along this line. We can make it more or less pronounced by modifying the emboss depth control. We can also make it narrower or wider, We can also select another bump map for the emboss effect. It can be a groove or a different edge file. Once we're satisfied with this edge, we can save these settings as a template. For instance, I want to save it as edge 03. And now this template is available to apply to any other line. For example, let's select all patterns, right mouse click, and select our edge 03 from the stitch submenu.
Let me now apply another preset that we have in our templates. And let's take a look at this line. We have an image of a straight stitch, 10 millimeters in length and 2 millimeters in width, offset of 2 millimeters in a single line. We can add another row of stitches and modify the interval between the stitch lines, say 9 millimeters, which looks a bit much. The collection of the available stitches is located in your Documents 3D Draper Stitches folder. Here we have the images, bump maps, and presets. You can add your own stitch image and bump maps. For example, let's take the straight stitch image and open it in Photoshop. Let's modify it like this and save it under a different name as a PNG file to support transparency. Let's call it X stitch. Now I select a line and open the new image and adjust the length and the width and move it a bit away from the edge. Finally, we can save it as a new preset X stitch and apply it to some other lines. For example, to the line on this sleeve shoulder. Please check out the other tutorials for other features and let us know if you have any questions or suggestions.